Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about NumPy creations. So basically in the previous video we have talked about what is NumPy and why do we use it. In this video let's see how do we create it. Maybe in the last video we have seen some demo but I've not explained you how do we create the NumPy array. So basically there are multiple ways of creating a NumPy array. So we can use arrange, we can use line space, we can use from existing array and how do we do that? Let's see step by step. So the first thing I'm going to do is I will open my Jupyter Notebook. So basically uh, we can do in multiple IDs. I'm using Jupyter Notebook here. It gives you a good visuals on the page itself. So it's good. Okay, so I'm going to go here and the first thing you will do is you have to import the NumPy module. And by default with Python, you will not get NumPy. So make sure that you install NumPy. And if you don't have it, you can just go to Google and search for how do we install NumPy. And it's, very, it's quite simple. You can just use PIP to install it. Or if you have Anaconda, you can use Conda to do that. Okay, so let me just import the NumPy. And I'm not going to use the same name again and again. It's very, it's not that big, but let's use Analyze. So let's use NP, which is very common. So this is how you import NumPy. And the way to check if you have NumPy or not, just run the cell. If it works, it works, right? So if you could simply say, enter, no error. So yeah, I have NumPy. Okay, that's the first step, right? Uh, next, what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to create a NumPy array. So let me just name it as NumPy array. You can name anything you want. And let's create the first array. And the way you can do that is with the help of NumPy module, there is a function called array, you can use it. And in this you can pass your values as a list. And you can create a single dimensional array, you can create multi-dimensional array. So if I want to create a single dimension, it's very simple. You can just use the square bracket and you can say one comma two comma three. It's that simple, right? And once you do this, just run this cell and it got created. The ideal way is to also print it so to see things are working on or not, enter, and, and you can see we got an array. It says array, one, two, three, those are the values you have. What if you want to create a multi-dimensional, maybe two-dimensional, three-dimensional? In that case, you can create a list of list, right? So we can use something like this. And yes, we can create two-dimensional array using list, but then array is better in processing. So let's use two-dimensional array here, or list, or list and list. And uh, let me add some values. So what you do is you basically mention that I have an array here, or the list here, which is this. And inside this, you have multiple lists. So this is your first array. So you do that in the square bracket, then you give a comma, then the second bracket. And this is where you can mention the values, let's say uh, two comma, four comma, eight. And we can have one more if you want, maybe one comma, three comma, five. So we got this array and I'm using a wrong separator. So it should be comma. Okay, and now we got two dimensional array. To, to check this, I will just simply run this cell and you can see we got an array, which is two dimensional. Uh, we can even check the details of this particular array. What type of data it is carrying? Because in list, normally you can have any type of data. So it's suppose heterogeneous data. Here, we need to have same type of data. And as you can see, I'm using all integers here. You can even check it. So I can say numpy underscore array dot, we can use a property called dtype. And when you do that, it will print the type of it, which is int32. So that's how you can get the type. Uh, you can even check the shape of it. As I mentioned, this is two dimensional. So how many rows, how many columns you have? So you can check that with the help of a property. So you can say numpy array dot, which is the name of the array dot, you can say shape. So it will give you the shape of your array, which is three comma three, which is three, three rows and three columns. Uh, you can even check how many values you have. So of course, three into three is nine, but let me verify. And now I'm thinking I should have used the smaller name for the variable. Okay, so numpy array dot, there's a property called size and when you say enter, it will give you nine. So we have nine values there. Uh, you can even check the dimensions. So here we are creating two dimensional array. So if you want to see numpy array dot, and to check that you can say ndim. So basically ndim is the, it will show you dimensions, enter, and you can see it says two. So if you make it a single dimension, it will say one. If you make it three dimension, it will say three. So this is one way of creating it. The other ways as well, example, you can, maybe you want all zeros in the NumPy array, or maybe you can create a empty array, but then if you create an empty array, then adding a value to it uh, is a tedious task. So what if you can create, let's say if you know that you're going to create a two dimensional array three by three, and you're going to change the values later, so you can basically change the value later. So in that case, you can create something called an array, a two dimensional array with a values zeros or maybe ones. So to do that, let's create uh, another array, which is let's say zeros. 
This is another array we have. And this zero array need to have all the values which are zero. So in that case, you can use NP, which is the model which we have imported. And it has a function to do that. So it, you can simply say zeros. And in this, you can mention that I want all the zeros. And if you say enter this, you can see you got an error. It says missing required argument shape, so position zero. So basically you have to mention this shape as well. So in that case, you have to mention the shape like this. You can say two comma three. So it will create a two dimensional array with two rows and three columns. But will it work? Enter, no, it's still not working. It says cannot interpret three as a data type. The thing is it needs shape as a first parameter and you are passing two parameters. So you can simply pass in the bracket as one value. And now if you run this, it's a zeros array with all zeros. And to, to verify that I can simply type this and enter. And you can see we got the array, two dimensional array, which is two rows and three columns with all zeros. But if you observe, you got the float values. To verify that, you can simply say zeros dot. So you can use a property here, which is D type, enter, and you can see it says all float. What if you want to create all int? Okay, that's simple. You can give a comma here and mention the D type. So you can mention the D type as int and run this. So now you can see you got zeros, but then they look like integers. To verify that, you can simply enter and you got all int. Likewise, you can also create ones. So you can create the two dimensional array with all ones. And I want you to guess, how do we do it? That's right. So you can say ones, again, that's a, just a name. You can say NP dot ones in the bracket, same thing, you can mention the dimension. I will say three by three this time. And you can mention the type as well. So D type, by default value float, you can mention int here. And now I can simply print the ones, enter, and you can see we got all ones. You can verify the type as well by typing ones dot D type, try it out. Now we have one more way you can use something called arrange. Maybe you want the values from zero to 10. So in that case, you can use arrange. Instead of typing it manually, that's a tedious task, you can use arrange. It's more like, you know, we have for where you use range, you specify the range size, and we have used that in the previous video. In this case, we can use arrange. So how do we use it? Quite simple. So I can say ARR range, or maybe ARR underscore r so array with the help of range and you can use np and the function name is arrange and you can pass the value here so let's say if i pass 10 so i'm expecting it should give 0 to 10 but if you run this of course i have to also print it if i run this you can see we got the value we got the array and we got it from 0 to 9 so this 10 is exclusive so if you want till 10 in that case you have to say 11 and now if you run this you can see we got till 10. So this is quite, quite handy. In fact, you can do more with this arrange. There are multiple options here, but just to keep it simple, we can use arrange to get these values. So let's say I want the values between one and five, something like this. I will say add a demo. And I want the values from one to five, but then in, in float values. And I want 10 values in between. So of course, how you will say, hey, we are starting from zero to five. How can you get 10 values? So in that case, you can use point values. So maybe if I want zero to five, 10 values, so 0 0.5, uh, then 1, then 1 1.5, something like that. So in that case, we have some inbuilt function, which is called line space, which handles the float properly. So you can use line space here. And you can mention that, hey, I want from 1 to 5, but in between I want 10 values. And if you try to print it, this is what you get. So basically it is inclusive of 5, and that's why you can see it is starting from 1, and then 1 1.44, and 1 1.88, and likewise. So there's an equal distribution from 1 to 5. Right, that's how you get it. So we can use line space here. There's also log space if you want to get exponentially growth. Uh, so you can use log space as well. And there are multiple things as well. So we can also got empty, we also got uh, identity. Maybe we'll use that in the upcoming videos where, you, where it is needed. But at this point, this are, there are multiple ways of creating it and we have done it with the help of normal array. Uh, we have done it with the help of zeros, ones, arrange, and line space. And you will see this type of things in upcoming videos. So that's it from this video where we talked about how do we create the NumPy array.